there has to be a realization of your problem. You are a sinner. Amen. Go, to, go with me to Romans 3 and look at, look at what God says about you and me. Yeah, the joyful sound is Jesus saves, but have, have you figured this out? Have you given time to searching him with your heart? Have you given time to secure this great truth personally for you? Because it's not good enough that for God so loved the world, you've got to put your name in there, for God so loved you. You've got to personalize this thing. But notice this. The first thing you've got to do is you have to have a realization of your problem. You are a sinner. Look at what it said in Romans 3.10. As it is written, there is, what's that word? None. None righteous. No, not one. Let's just put it in layman's terms. Nobody's good enough to go to heaven. Amen. Even you. Amen. No one's good enough. Why not? Here's why. In verse 23, he uses the opposite word all. For all, that's anyone without exception, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know today that probably the hardest truth I had to accept was this one? Raised an all-American boy. Joined the Marine Corps, Mustanging to the class of 85 at Annapolis. I just thought I was good enough to get it. I thought I was righteous enough in that balance of life to be passed through when judgment day came. You know, the hardest thing for me to accept was I was just a dirty, rotten, wicked, filthy sinner Amen. like everybody else. Amen. That strikes at our pride, doesn't it? Amen. That, really, that really bothers us. Most Americans today have this philosophy that, that you're going to have this line up there. The best of the best, the most righteous, Mother Teresa, somebody, is going to be up there. And then you're going to go, you're going to fade in righteousness until you get down here. There will be Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler. I mean, this is and somewhere between those two reference points, you and I are going to be standing. And God's going to come along and he's going to judge our righteousness. And he's going to say, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. Boom. And he'll draw a line and say, all of you up here, you're good enough to go. The rest of you aren't good enough to go. Amen. You know where everybody thinks God's going to draw the line? Right behind them. Right behind them. You know, I'm not as good as some, but I ain't as bad as me. You're there. You're somewhere in that line in your mind. Yeah. You think God's going to draw right behind you. Yep. You know, because after all, he understands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's who we are. God doesn't do that. He goes down that whole line, and you know what he says? He draws a line in front, in front of every one of us. He said, y'all have sinned. Every last Amen. one of you. You do not deserve my heaven. And you'll never be good enough to get there. Right. Amen. You realize your problem. You really realize that you do deserve judgment. Because Amen. by yourself, you're just a dirty, rotten, wicked, filthy sinner. Amen. Amen. That's right. You say, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you'll never go any further until you get past this one. Yeah. And I can't convince you. But I know someone who can. The Holy Spirit of God. And I will say this. If you'll get in that Bible, the Spirit of God works through the Word of God. He'll show you how God sees you, not how you see you. And then it'll bring you to the second truth. Number one, you have to realize your problem. But second of all, you and I need to recognize His person. This is speaking of Jesus Christ. There must be a recognition. After I realize my problem, I'm a sinner by nature. and I'm a sinner by choice. I turn somewhere to try to get help, to try to go ahead and, and get this sin problem handled, and then I recognize his person, Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can save you. He's it. Choir sang it. People have asked me, what makes Jesus so special? Well, there's a lot, but one thing I'll tell you what makes Christianity different than every other religion is this. The resurrection. No other leader raised himself from the dead. 
Only Jesus Christ. You say, well, why is that important? Because the wages of sin is death. And if you can defeat death, that means you've got power over sin. And by that resurrection, Jesus proved he was the way, the truth, and the life. He's not a way to life. He is life. First John says that. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you recognize your problem? You're a sinner by nature and choice. But do you realize... And is there a recognition and a realization of his person? Jesus Christ. Go to Acts 4. I want to look at a verse here in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Listen to the exclusivity that Jesus Christ brings. Listen to what he says here in Acts 4, verse 12. The Bible says this in Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Now, who's that person being spoken of? The Lord Jesus Christ here. Yep. I want to make this very clear. There's no salvation in Buddha. That's what missions is all about. There's no salvation in Muhammad. No, they're not. They're, they never raised themselves from the dead. There may have been some good moral teachings. There may have been some things there that you could use in this life. But there's nothing there for the next life. It's just not there. They're still in the grave. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven. That's the name of Jesus Christ. Given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. That's it. He's the door to heaven. He's your only hope. You've got to realize your problem. Then you've got to recognize his person. Could I just say this? Jesus Christ, God never sent him to be your helper. He sent him to be your savior. Amen. Which infers you need rescued. Yeah. Amen? You can't save yourself. Just like a drowning swimmer. You can go ahead and grab one hand with the other. You cannot lift yourself out of the predicament. You need someone to come along and lift you out of that. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. you got to realize the problem. you got to recognize his person. But then thirdly, you got to receive his provision. Go to Romans with me and, and look at this. In Romans... Chapter 6, in verse 23, we just see the difference here between a wage and a gift. Notice what's said in Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Notice he doesn't say the wages of a lot of sin. He doesn't say the wages of bad sin. You know, sin is not quantitative, right? Nor is sin qualitative. Amen? I, I mean, you know, the guy going along and, and breaks the, the speed limit by, by just uh, five miles an hour can't look at the trooper and say, Hey, I'm only going five over. What are you doing to write me a ticket for? Amen? You either keep the law or you don't. None of us have kept it. It's not qu quantitative either. Well, this is only the first time I broke it. You shouldn't give me a ticket. You know, with me, first of all, we know the truth of the matter. It's not your first time. <laughs> Amen. I bet people say, well, I didn't deserve it. Well, that's for the 2,000 times you did and never got caught. But anyhow, nonetheless, none of us have kept the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. We've not kept God's limits. The Ten Commandments alone. Let alone the thoughts of our heart and where our mind dwells. Wages of sin is death. That's what you earned. That's yours. But then he goes on to say this. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. But this gift is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation is not a wage to be earned. It's a gift to be received. Amen. Amen. You don't have anything to do with salvation other than receiving what God has already paid for. Amen? And that strikes at the cord of our pride. God determined your only way to heaven is through His Son. And He didn't consult you first and ask you what you thought. That strikes at us. Does that make sense? 
This salvation God offers, He paid for it. He did what you couldn't do. In His holiness, He must judge sin, but in His mercy, He'll allow someone to take the penalty for you. But whoever that penalty, who that one is, has to be sinless. Can't be a sinner like you. And so God became a man, lived the sinless life, died the sinless death, and offers the gift. Amen. Now, what do you have to do to make a gift yours? Receive it. There has to be a recept reception of his provision. That five bucks I worked for. Maybe I didn't work as hard as some of you, but I worked for it. I earned that. Amen? And I'm going to offer it to you. What's your name? Mark? Mark, here's five bucks, all right? It, it's a gift. Now, what do you have to do to make it yours? Just receive it, right? So go ahead. But I'll tell you what, before you, get, before you get this, I need my motorhome washed. Right? So if you do that, then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll give that to you. What did the gift just turn into? A wage. A wage. A yeah. big motorhome. <laughs> if you'll do it for five bucks, pal, I, it's, it's a tiny one. It's a tiny one. <laughs> It'll only teach you an hour. An hour and a half. <laughs> the wages of your sin is death. The second death is the lake of fire. That's acceptance by faith. You've got to acknowledge. I may not think that way, but that's how God operates. But then the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the gift. Jesus, in John, is mentioned in John chapter 1, says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. That's the Jew. And then he says this, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power, authority to become the sons of God, even to them that what? You ready for this? Believe on. It's like boarding a ship. It's like boarding a ship. That's the best way I can describe salvation yeah. is boarding a ship. Turning from me and turning and seeing this is my rescue yeah. and stepping across and putting all my weight and all my hope on Jesus Christ yeah. alone. Yeah. Even to them that believe on his name. I love the hymn. My faith has found a resting place not in device nor creed I trust the ever living one his wounds for me shall plead I need no other argument I need no other plea watch this it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me Amen. it's a simple truth <clears throat> For God so loved you, He gave you His only begotten Son, that if you would believe on Him, you would never perish, but instead have everlasting life. 